Through the EMT initiative, we strongly believe that national teams, national EMTs, are in the best position to respond quickly uh, with the right context, the right culture, and understanding the local population's needs. I'll start with what the Filipino teams do not have, and that is logistics. Uh, it's really a resource-constrained uh, um, uh, situation. Uh, the Philippines do not have the equipment that we saw that the foreign uh, medical teams bring. Uh, we hope to be able to, to, to get towards that some, someday. But what the Filipino um, EMT experience can bring is that experience. These national uh, EMTs have been deployed to all types of, of events, uh, volcanic eruption, uh, conflict, floods, typhoons. Um, you name it, we, we, we've, we've had it. No, but uh, all other events, our, our, our teams are uh, well experienced. Uh, uh, that's, why during the, that's why during the TOT here, people here were no strangers to the scenarios that were being, being presented. We, they, they, these people have seen all of it. The EMT initiative was born from the Haitian response, where we saw lots of teams willing to help, but not necessarily with the training and the equipment and the self-supplies uh, that we expect of them. Uh, many arrived not understanding the context and the culture of Haiti, um, and many were unaware of the international coordination mechanisms that exist. Uh, from those, um, the WHO and our Americas region in particular uh, put down some minimum standards um, and a classification system, a way of naming teams that allows both teams and countries affected to understand what's being offered and what's being accepted. <laughs> There will be lots of tips and guidance from yourselves, from ourselves. We will collect these tips, techniques, for how we can help our participants learn and remember more from the training that we give them to really maximize. So the emergency medical team community uh, is very diverse. The government teams, there are military teams, there are NGO teams. And over the years, we've tried to harmonize the approach by which they train their personnel ready to deployment, whether it's nationally or internationally. One of the key tools we tried to, to work with the uh, EMT community is to develop a common training package, really for the induction phase of uh, the team training. So this is all about building the capacity on a roster for how they will respond as a team. It's very field-based training. It's very practical, very oriented on the deployment of a body of people with their kit and equipment to the emergency and how they will manage themselves in the field. What the WHO did in those intervening two or three years before Typhoon Haiyan was set a global standard um, and a classification system, a naming of type 1, type 2 and type 3. Now, now we know when a team is offered and they call themselves a type 1, what that means? It means they're an outpatient clinic uh, and that they respond best to a small town or a village. Uh, whereas if they're a type 3, they're a very, very large field hospital with intensive care units and operating theatres. And we know that they belong in a larger town or even a city. Just an idea from other, other teams. So where do these things come from? They're, uh, they're donated. Okay. Donated. Okay. okay. So really good to bring to the yes, field. Yes. Very but then we'll have to think about how they become part of the furniture. So Tafo and Haiyan was the first time we saw the classification rolled out across the world. Uh, it was found very useful and fit for purpose. Uh, the country understood what was being offered and the teams understood how they could plug into a coordination system. Here for yeah, communication, we yep. have, uh, of course, the radio. Yes. We have satellite. Oh, great. Okay. And that's a macerator. Because this is what we really need here in the Philippines. Like we have very good teams, competent uh, teams with uh, the commitment and uh, because of the many experiences that we had. But we need to organize properly these teams. We have to come up with uh, systems and procedures that really would work. And uh, very important also is to have the appropriate logistics and equipment to be able to respond properly. So these are all uh, defined in that uh, global EMT uh, classification and minimum standards. So we are trying our best to be able to meet these standards. Yeah.
share with you and to be given this opportunity to welcome you all. I really did not know that this is the kind of importance Region 8 has been uh, given in terms of managing health emergencies. Because you have the capacity. You export doctors and nurses all over the world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, all we're doing is doing a very small bit to help you. Really this is the first time we've conducted a, a course uh, helping uh, Ministry of Health, the Department of Health, uh, to create their own learning package and their own training system for their national teams. We've chosen the Philippines because of the scale, the size of it. Uh, there are over 20 teams to be developed here in the Philippines. And also because they were the place that we first saw uh, the minimum standards and the classification system used across the world for Typhoon Haiyan. The reason that this course is so special is that we're combining the techniques of um, a facilitation workshop. So we have very senior and experienced facilitators in health emergency response with us this week. And we're exposing uh, this group of individuals to the core training concept of becoming a member of an EMT team. Some underlying uh, <laughs> physical conditions that might be disposed to uh, help. Uh, ideas uh, about how to release your emotions during... Me. I'd say the Philippines community is very well developed in terms of the training system they have here. Um, as you mentioned, these are the best of the best within the, the national framework. What we're trying to do here are two things. One is to familiarize them in the package that has been developed globally and give them an opportunity to then adapt it. Um, so that can be a supplement to what they already have or it could be in some areas to, to bring in new ideas and a fresh approach. The other side is so that they can go back to their training teams and then build the training skills that they're working with within their own pools. Um, so this has been very much a participatory workshop, uh, it's a pilot, we're getting feedback all the time uh, on the package and how useful it is for them. Uh, and now we're at the stage where they're going to pick up this package and then run with it in just a few months time and, and we'll, we'll see the, the benefit of this training when they actually deliver it for themselves. We really believe that national teams are in the best position to respond. What we'll see from this program is um, a strong national capacity to train their own teams. Uh, we train the trainers and from then on they go back to their regions across the country uh, and help create their own uh, national teams that can be responding within their own province, their own region, or, or be offered between regions uh, to a full national response. From that, we also expect the Philippines to create their own team to send to other countries, particularly across uh, the Asia and Pacific region. Uh, we've seen this also roll out in places like Indonesia and Thailand, where there are over 70 teams. Uh, we've seen it happen in the South Americas and across Europe. So gradually, as this initiative strengthens, you will see more and more capacity at the national level, then offered to their regional neighbours, and from that, a safer uh, global health emergency workforce and health security.